Hi, my name is Lise Colucci, and I'm one of the life coaches over at Queen Being. In this program, we talk to survivors, and we hear them as they discuss issues in their life and have questions surrounding narcissistic abuse. Today, we will continue with our conversation that we had last time with Sarah. She was talking about healing from a narcissistic mother. Be sure to hit subscribe to see more, and we'll get going. And I know I've got a lifetime of this to overcome. This didn't just happen overnight. It's not going to go away overnight. Right. But I just, it's uh, some days. It's letting, letting go of an expectation is, is really helpful. Letting go of when will that I feel better. That is the biggest one, I think. Oh, and hard. I think but it's, it's because it's, there's still that, always that little girl in there that hopes. Right. She, let her hope and hold her hand. And look what she's looking at. Because she, if you can do that and you can get into her mindset, she can help that part of you, can help you now. You know, you can see the world through those eyes. Yes, she had pain and she had, but she also had hope. And she also had, you know, all the beautiful things about her are still you. She's still who, she's still you. And you're still, you know, you're one. And so <sighs> it's, yeah. The complex. Sorry. <laughs> so sorry. Don't, don't be sorry. This is a, <sighs> a complex question and it's very real and painful. And also a relief, I think, you know, when we start seeing, oh, I can change this. And, you know, it's. Well, and I think also the whole blank slate <laughs> is intimidating. Well, there's never there. There's always the, what we have. The, we're always working on stuff, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. See, but you're not going, you're not jumping into the abyss. You're building a foundation underneath you to jump on top of. Okay. I need to picture that in my head. Hang on. Picture of it. Do something. Draw a picture of like stepping stones or, or college you can jump on and or cut out pictures from a magazine of something. You know, this is, you want to build like a, an imagery board or something of, of this foundation you're building for yourself. You can even like put a, put a, a little pebble each day, you know, to show that the efforts that you made just to like represent them. Uh -huh. Because you're building... You're trying to strip away a belief system and put a new belief system in its place. And yes. it's not like you're going to take this old belief system and throw it in a trash can and then there's nothing. And you're just like floating around in this vast abyss of- uh, That's exactly how I have almost felt. Yes. And instead, what's actually happening is you're very slowly and kind of with care and and methods, you know, you're using techniques to that have been proven for by other people's lives. And slowly you're building piece by piece underneath you. And sometimes they're like giant pieces and sometimes they're tiny pebbles. And it doesn't really matter because they all are part of the foundation. Like you can't you can't piece things together without a little bits of sand in there to hold them, you know? So uh -huh. the tiny efforts matter. And and then once, you know, as the new belief system fades away, or I don't know that it will fade away, but it will be less of a noisy voice in your head. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like these things always stay with us to some degree, but they don't, they're not how we view the world anymore. Yeah. And, okay. and then you're catching it like, and then it, it really does get quieter in that space. Like it's not as you're not judging yourself at every turn. You know, once you start putting this together and, and, and doing the things like, you know, affirming and changing beliefs, like really even verbally out loud, if you're alone, oh, I just said one, you know, two steps forward, one step back. Okay, that, that, that kind of makes me feel limited. You know, it's like checking in. That makes uh -huh. me feel that makes me feel like I didn't get anywhere when in fact 
I don't know that that's true. So why don't I just say, I made some effort today. Okay. You know, like, why don't I just change it? See what it feels like. That actually feels better. Like even just saying that right now, I feel. Yes, kind of, it, it's, it's a lot more positive. It is. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot more real because you don't know that you made two steps back. You don't know. No. No? You just feel. You feel it based on, on patterning, right? Not on... Mm -hmm. Sometimes we know, I mean, sometimes it's pretty obvious things and that's okay. We do have days where we just like slide down the hill and start tumbling and or moss and, you know, going down. Uh -huh. It does happen. We're okay. But for the most part, it's, it, it's more of a, an attitude and a, and a feel because of how we were taught to feel and how we were taught to think about ourselves. So you know, it sounds like you're to the place of, of really wanting to push through that. I, I just, I want to move. I want, I want the next thing. I want more than I want to be upset. Right. Right. It's like transcending into being a thriver versus surviving all the time. Just yes, exactly. Yeah, I hear that. And then you can ask, what, what would it look like? What would it look like if it were as I want it to be. That's good. That, that's good. Yeah, so I, I think this is going to definitely help. Because like I said, I think a big part of it was that I thought I did have to not necessarily tackle everything at one time, hmm. but that perfectionism was there. Right, right. And it was, if I don't do this right, I'll screw up the rest of my life kind of thing and you know that whole judging it's like well, there's no right but you know you go back and forth give me a, a lot to think about and a lot of what I need to readjust my thinking on and, and just to really start practicing that in, interruption is, is that what you said to interrupt that patterns that are in your head interrupting the patterns that are in your behavior thoughts which are not serving you to better your life Mm -hmm. uh, because we got to remember that the perfectionism and the um, self-judgment was survival. It was survival because it's what you had to do. Support, um, that's huge because without the support, then it does feel like falling into the abyss because you don't know what to do when you start panicking that this is all wrong, this isn't working, you know, and, and the feelings get really big. You know, and when the feelings get really big, as we release, um, as we release beliefs, you kind of have to feel your way through. And when you feel them, they're not comfortable and they're, they're not meant to be comfortable. They're awful things. Um, if you don't feel your way through, you keep it up here. And then, you know, your healing just stays at a, at a certain level. When you bring it like down into your feelings and you'll feel your way through, um, you know, that's where having support is important. Um, you know, there's certain points you might, you know, you might find a therapist or you might join, you know, coaching or group coaching or something to make it more personal support, but, you know, also mm -hmm. support groups and, you know, live streams and watching videos and, you know, just connecting with people that, you know, are also on the same path and um, understand when you're having those the, the big feels come on, then, um, you know, right there, there's your external foundation that feeds back to the internal. So it's like you build this internal foundation with changing belief systems through interrupting their patterns. And I mean, there's a, that's just one thing. There are so many ways to, to start changing your belief system. Mm -hmm. um, but as you do that, you build your internal resource basically you build this foundation it's an internal resource that you start building and then when things fall apart and the big feels come and you don't know what to do anymore and then you have the external support from support groups or coaching or therapist or you know someone that can help you and be there and say yeah this is this is normal this is what it feels like and I totally it sucks and I know and then as you move through it it's it's healing I can tell you right now this has just been a big Stuff. I think I am starting to move that way. I just, I think I'm, I'm afraid to trip <laughs> and I need to not be, I need to learn to skip. <laughs> right. You need to learn to fall and roll. You know, it's like, yes. it's, when you feel like you're falling, you might not actually be falling. You might just be feeling. 
and oh that's that's probably it, true <laughs> and and that's okay and it it's you have to it's the unfortunate piece of this is you know i wish i could like make a little feeling box and let everyone just put their feelings there and not have to <laughs> all this stuff <laughs> but you, you have do to. it all in best <laughs> <laughs> He's so full. <laughs> yeah, but you have to feel these things and, and, and through feeling them, you transform them yourself instead of it coming from the outside and it, um, it really can benefit you. And it, it can... Because um, the next time I feel like that, I just need to stop and... I don't, feel. Okay. Just write it down. It. Write down everything you're feeling. This is where journals come in handy. They're great for feelings. The feelings, they don't need to have an explanation. They just are there. They don't need to be explained away. They don't need to be, you know, whatever. When you start thinking about letting go of a belief system or a pattern of believing, um, just take perfectionism for one. Like, it's scary to let go of that because it's what you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what's gotten you this far. It's, what, it's where you go when you feel out of control. It's where you go, you know, like there's a whole list of things like that it serves. Oh, yeah. There's a certain level of, there's a certain level of it that's healthy, right? But it tips over into not healthy when it starts to be like, people won't love me if I'm not perfect. Or if I don't do this right, then I'm a bad person. Or, you know, when it starts to affect belief system negatively about yourself. And then letting go of that, what else is there if I don't have that? So that can, right? And as you... So as you start working on letting go of these things you know aren't serving you, the feelings start to come up. They're real feelings that we don't, we're not allowed to feel when we're around a narcissist. Yes. That, and, and I just, I just feel like sometimes, cause that one of their arguments is that, you know, I hold grudges and I am just this mean hearted, cold hearted person who, who uh, can never let go of anything. Hmm. When I sit down and write, I hear that voice. Oh, you're just holding a grudge. Oh, you're just, you know, and, and I think that's why I struggle. That is programming and that is negative self-talk. Okay. And that's the thing that I need to interrupt, right? Is that yeah. what you're saying? For okay. that, I would rewrite it. I would write it down and rewrite it. Okay. The repeating thing, like you're such a something and you just keep hearing it over and over in your head. That's one that you can say, that is not me. That's coming from someone else. Cross that thing out and start over. Any belief that is opposing it changes it over and over again because it's our brains work like that. They go to the short, they create pathways and go there. They have a trigger and they go to the path, they follow the pathway to the reaction. Really simple affirmation of your choice being okay. Okay, I have some homework. Good stuff. <laughs> Is it, I think it, it is. Just, I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling hopeful. Good. It's so much the survival mindset that you're talking about and getting through that survival mindset into a thriving mindset. It's a place of growth. It, yes. That, that, that's, yes. <laughs> that's what I, I, I want. I want the sunshine on the flower and the water and the, you know, spring rain. I, I want, I don't want the dark cave anymore. <laughs> it's their dark cave. You go find your flower, you know? It's their, you just, one helpful thing is to remember that it is from programming. It is from, you know, it isn't coming from your authentic self. These thoughts that are going on in your head that keep you feeling stuck and keep you feeling under, under pressure. I'll never and, be good and, enough. That you'll never be good enough. All of that is not coming from your own self. It's from someone else putting it there repeatedly. So you can kind of see, if I if you picture it, that's their dark cave. That is not your dark cave. You don't have to play in there anymore. You can go out into the sunshine and find, pick your flowers, you know, and dance in the rain, whatever you want to do. Um, because you can make a choice to, to shift your life. They do not have to be a part of that. No, it's, I like the image of the cave because it came from you and that came from a place in you and a real, like, an image that you brought up. Um, that's her, her darkness and her shadowy dark cave and not yours. And you get to make decisions outside of it. You know, you don't have to stay there. Okay. 
الله يعمل جماهير